SEC Media Days is just around the corner, and that means ballots are due. This is my official predicted order to finish an SEC champion heading into the 2024 college football season. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Phillips of SEC Unfiltered. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications. Check us out via podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. We're brought to you by our friends over at MyBookie. Guys, go to mybookie.ag, use promo code SECU at sign up to receive a special welcome offer on your first deposit. Again, that's our friends over at MyBookie, promo code SECU, to get your special welcome offer today. With SEC Media Days just around the corner, that means ballots are due. And I figure with the media dropping their official picks in just a week or so from today, why not go ahead and get my selections out there in the open and let the banter begin? So without further ado, these are my official predicted order to finish, and SEC champion for the 2024 SEC football season. And guys, we will start at number 16, the Vanderbilt Commodores. And also, let me preface this by saying this. The week following SEC Media Days, I will be dropping official game-by-game predictions for each and every single team in the SEC. So you're going to know exactly how I got this predicted order to finish, where I stand with everything, why I picked each game. So I want to make sure you all know these aren't just picks. There are predictions behind each and every single one of these. Again, at number 16, I've got the Vanderbilt Commodores. Guys, the question with Vandy, it's not are they going to make a bowl game? Are they going to challenge in the SEC? The question is, is Vandy going to win an SEC game? And if they're going to win an SEC game, which one is it? I don't see it happening. I think the the road to Vanderbilt winning an SEC game, it's an uphill battle. I think their best chances are at Auburn and South Carolina at home, and even both of those are extreme long shots. Maybe Vanderbilt makes some noise in the non-conference. They've got an opportunity in their season opener against Virginia Tech, but realistically, a two- or three-win season is probably on the way for Clark Lee. And you have to wonder what that's going to mean for his future there in Nashville. Number 15, I've got the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Can you get to a bowl game in year one of Jeff Levy, guys? That's the question. And and, and I think, listen, this year one, it's not indicative of how I think Jeff Levy is going to fare in the long haul in Starkville. But you have to acknowledge what he's working with when it comes to the roster, especially on the defensive side. Right, you got a big tone setter early in the season, that game in Tempe against Arizona State. Then conference play gets going. And it's unfortunate for Levy, too, guys, and the Bulldogs because they couldn't have given them a more difficult schedule to kick off a new era of football than the one they did. So I think that's going to equate to year one growing pains. It's not an indictment of how I think Jeff Levy is going to fare over the long haul there in Starkville, but I do think this is going to be a rocky first year for Mississippi State as they fight to just get to bowl eligibility. At number 14, I've got the South Carolina Gamecocks. Listen, I think you look at South Carolina's schedule. There are four games you feel confident that should be wins. Outside of that, every other game is a toss-up at best. And really, every other game, guys, there's a likelihood that at least right now, South Carolina is going to be an underdog. Do I think Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks are going to find a way to probably win a game they shouldn't. Sure. I mean, it's the South Carolina way, right? You ask any South Carolina fan, it happens year after year after year. And we've seen what Shane Beamer and company can do. 2022, back-to-back top 10 wins against Tennessee and Clemson. Unfortunately, with that being said, there are a ton of questions with this squad, right? You got a brand-new quarterback, Lenora Sellers, extremely talented, but he's a youngster. You don't have a clear-cut wide receiver one. You still have question marks on the offensive line. There's more talent there, but will it come together? And then defensively, yes, you upgrade in the transfer portal, and yes, you return a lot of experience, 
But this is returning from a defense that was not very good a year ago. And the schedule is what it is for South Carolina. It's incredibly difficult yet again. I think it's going to be tough sledding for the Gamecocks, guys. And they've really got to bank on, too, do you get back to some of that special teams magic you saw in the first two years of Shane Beamer? Again, the fight to a bowl game is on. After a 5-7 and seven season, you got to find a way to bounce back and get to bowl eligibility. It could be difficult year four of the Shane Beamer era. Number 13, I've got the Florida Gators. Again, Florida, you look at their schedule. I mean, it's an absolute gauntlet, right? That game against Miami season opener is a huge tone setter. First SEC matchup comes against Texas A&M. You've got the non-conference against UCF sprinkled in there as well. And then again, the SEC schedule is off and running. Again, another team down here. A lot of these teams, guys, can you just get to six wins? Can you get to a bowl game? Maybe you get to seven. Maybe one of these one of these overachieves and is much better than we think. But right now, guys, I think Florida, because of the schedule, I think Florida is going to be much better than they were a year ago. I don't know if we're really going to see the results of that because the schedule is so darn difficult. At number 12, I've got the Arkansas Razorbacks. Guys, I, I'm starting to feel a little bit better about Arkansas as we move throughout this, this offseason and this preseason, if you will. Taylor Green, Bobby Petrino, Andrew Armstrong on the offensive side. I think we could see some special things there. The offensive line's got to be better. And then defensively, you took a big step last year under first-year defensive coordinator Travis Williams. If they can do that again, the biggest question for Arkansas, it's the home slate, right? And if Arkansas is going to get to six or seven wins, they're going to have to pull an upset here or there. They're going to have to win a game you're not expecting. Could they? Maybe. Will they? Who knows? But I do like Arkansas in that 12 spot. And guys, key game going to be upcoming in week two at Oklahoma State in Stillwater. That's going to be the big one. I think the tone setter for the Hogs, that's really going to get them rolling. And uh, if they can win that game, I think Arkansas could be a team that overachieves this year. And I do see overachieving and Sam Pittman doing enough to retain his job. At number 11, I've got the Oklahoma Sooners. And guys, here's what's interesting. When you sit down, it's really easy to just blindly do a predicted order of finish and say, hey, this team's going to finish here. That team's going to finish here. But if you sit down and you break down schedules, you realize how important schedules are. And so Oklahoma, I'd have them higher. But guys, that schedule's brutal. Flat out, that schedule is brutal. I do think Oklahoma is going to be a little bit humbled when it comes to SEC play. I don't think they're going to be terrible by any means. I don't really think any of these teams down at the bottom, maybe outside of Vandy and Mississippi State, are going to be terrible. But guys, having a favorable schedule and not having a favorable schedule, it means everything in this conference, right? It means everything. And Oklahoma's schedule, unfortunately, unlike their friends in the Lone Star State, they did not get that. They did not get any favors from the SEC. It's an extremely difficult schedule. You know, we're all looking forward to that Oklahoma-Tennessee game. It'll be the SEC opener for the Sooners. I, I think it's going to be rough sledding, to be honest with you. Again, you guys will find out more when I drop my game-by-game -game predictions. But I do think it's going to be a difficult year one for Oklahoma. Love the defense, but they have issues where you can't afford to have them. That's quarterback and a shoddy offensive line. And even with Deion Burks on the outside, when you don't have line of scrimmage play and your quarterback's young and inexperienced, it's not a recipe for success. Guys, at number 10, I've got the Texas A&M Aggies. And as I've mentioned before, guys, listen, I am going to be admittedly a little bit more conservative on A&M than some others are, okay? I, I'm, I'm going to give A&M the opportunity to overachieve. I am, okay? So I think a and going to be a solid team, right? They've got talent all over the field. They've got talent on both sides. But I do think year one of a new regime, year one of a new uh, new head coach, new program, if you will, with Mike Elko, you know, they've got talent. But I do think there's going to be some growing pains early on year one. And again, a schedule that's actually pretty manageable, but I think there could be some pitfalls along the way. At number nine, I've got the Auburn Tigers. Auburn could move up even further if if Peyton Thorne can take a massive step forward. Because there's no team in the SEC that upgraded their skill position players more, I think, than the Auburn Tigers. And I think defensively, they're going to be salty as well, especially on that defensive line. So 
what do they get out of the quarterback? If they can get solid play, they could go up even further. But I do think Auburn is going to improve from their win total from a season ago. Not by much, but I do think they're going to improve. Guys, at number eight, I was actually kind of surprised by this one. When I went through, and again, guys, I took a helmet schedule. I picked every single game because I wanted to get the most accurate order of finish I possibly could. I was surprised how high on Kentucky I was, honestly. And guys, though, you you look at the schedule. It's not an easy schedule by any means, but I think it sets up well for the Wildcats. I really do. And I think Kentucky's a team right now being severely undervalued. I think when you look at their front seven on defense, Deion Walker, Octavius Oxendine, you add Jamon Dumas Johnson, the linebacker from Georgia, right? Then you look on the offensive side. I think Brock Vandergriff can be a nice player. I think on the offensive line, they're going to be better. Barry on Brown, Dane Key at wide receiver. So, you know, you haven't heard any chatter about Kentucky, but I'm telling you guys, and I maybe I'll be the only one. I was surprised how high I was on Kentucky. And I do think this could be a nice bounce back year for the Wildcats. And I think Kentucky, certainly based off the preseason expectations and preseason chatter, I think Kentucky can be one of the surprises in the SEC. I got them at eight. At number seven, I've got the LSU Tigers. Guys, I, I'm just, I think LSU is going to be very good. I got to see more from the defense before I buy more LSU stock. And we're, we're getting into, guys, here's the thing. From eight to seven, I would say this is kind of the next tier, right? Like, these are my realistic, from this point on, these are realistic college football playoff contenders. These are teams that are going to be right there on the fringe. Record reflects that, and that's why they're up here at the top of the standings. With LSU, it's all about what they get out of the defense, right? I think the offense is going to be fine. It's not going to be quite as good as last year. They will be more balanced. Gabriel Nussmeyer's just got to be consistent. Take care of the football. They're going to be fine. They got playmakers everywhere on the offensive side, and they got one of the best offensive lines in college football. Defensively, listen, LSU's got two or three, I think, scholarship bodies at D-tackle. If they have any sort of injuries or they just have poor play there, they don't have anybody else to cycle in that's going to be an improvement. So it could be a long, long year, a frustrating year for LSU if they cannot find some answers on the defensive front. Good news, Harold Perkins Jr. is going to be put in a lot better positions to make big-time plays, but LSU's a team. The reason I put them seven and not higher, I'm skeptical about the defense, and I wonder, after you lose Jaden Daniels, you lose Malik Neighbors, you lose Brian Thomas, how are you going to be better? That's my big question. How are you going to be better? LSU's got some question marks I need answered. And number six, I've got the Missouri Tigers. Guys, again, Mizzou, I think, going to be a very, very good football team. Um, Right there in the thick of the college football playoff hunt. I really believe that. I think they're going to be squarely in the thick of the playoff hunt. Maybe defensively you look at it and say, you know what, they have some deficiencies, they have some issues. But, guys, Mizzou is one of those teams that, you know, the schedule. I mean, you look at the schedule, guys. There's no such thing as an easy schedule in the SEC. But not all schedules are built equally, right? Not all schedules are the same. You talk about a manageable schedule. Missouri absolutely got that. Anything less than double-digit wins, maybe you could say nine and three, but I mean, anything less than double-digit wins, that's going to be considered a massive disappointment in Como. The offense is going to be fantastic. Brady Cook returning, Luther Burden, Theo Weiss, the two running backs in Noel, and and I'm forgetting his other name. How could I do that? I, I apologize. Uh, but anyways, the two-headed monster at running back there that they added the two guys, the transfers, they're going to be fantastic there as well. Uh, Marcus Carroll, I apologize. Carroll and Noel, they're going to be great at running back. The defense is where you have questions. You lose Blake Baker. But I think Missouri is going to be right there in the thick of it yet again. Guys, at number five, I've got the Alabama Crimson Tide. Here's the thing. If you're expecting some huge drop-off and you're looking for the demise of Alabama, you're not going to get it. But it is weird to see Bama picked at this point. Again, I challenge you. Go through the schedule, pick the games. You'll be kind of surprised where teams end up based off who's beating who, tiebreakers, et cetera. But again, I think Bama's going to be very good, guys. I mean, I, I, I don't see Bama falling off a cliff or anything crazy like that. The schedule is interesting. You got that game against Georgia. Uh, I mean, that's the one, guys, I talked about. If Alabama beats Georgia, it completely 
changes our conversation about the SEC and the dynamic and the layout and what have you. Uh, but right now, I've got Alabama in that five spot. They do have to replace a lot. Love Jalen Milrow at quarterback. Uh, the offensive line's got to take a step forward, obviously. And then defensively, how do you replace those dudes in the back end and the secondary? Bama's still going to be really good. But I got them at five, which feels weird to put the Crimson Tide in the five spot. Guys, this one may surprise you as we get to the top four. I've got the Tennessee Volunteers at number four, man. I'm, I'm buying the Tennessee hype. I'm buying Nico at quarterback. Ia Maliaba, I'm buying his hype. I'm buying what he can be in Josh Heupel's system, Josh Heupel's scheme. They've got weapons all over the place. You'd like to find a compliment to Dylan Sampson at running back, but they're going to be fine. They're going to run the football well. Wide receiver, they're going to be electric. Chris Brazel, I expect. He's going to be an immediate impact guy. Squirrel White is back. Brew McCoy's back. They got other guys you probably haven't even heard of that in Josh Heupel's system, they're going to explode on the scene. And then defensively, this is one of the best front sevens in the SEC, guys, led by James Pierce Jr., who you could argue is the best defensive player in college football. Some would say he's the best pound for bound college football player, period. So I think Tennessee on Rocky Top, they're feeling good. They're riding high, and I think for good reason. Uh, that game early on in Norman's a big one. You do get Bama at home. You got to go to Georgia. That's tough. And there's some other pitfalls in there as well, potential trap games. But I'm buying Tennessee, man. I think Tennessee under Josh Heifel's for real. I think they're going to be a college football playoff contender on a yearly basis. I got Tennessee finishing fourth in the SEC. Number three, I've got the Ole Miss Rebels. Guys, this is where we're getting into our elite to the elites, right? We're getting into the absolute upper tier, upper echelon. So I don't have Ole Miss in the SEC championship game. That may be considered a disappointment. I do have Ole Miss in the college football playoff. I do think Ole Miss is going to win double-digit games. I absolutely believe that. But you look at the schedule. There's some tricky ball games, right? You do have Georgia at home. I know you get them at home. Did you add enough through the portal to make up what was it, like a 40-point deficit from last year's game? That game at LSU is one I've got circled as well, guys. That one's really tricky. Revenge factor. That one could be really, really tough, and I think it will be tough. There's some other games that are difficult as well. Guys, Ole Miss's expectations, absolutely, I agree. I'm buying Ole Miss as a contender for not just making the playoff. We're past that. Winning the national championship. I think Ole Miss has that kind of roster. Um, I think there's a lot of folks out there, maybe I'm one included, that you want to go see them win the big game. They just haven't done that under Lane Kiffin. This is the year for the Rebels, and I've got them finishing third right now. And second, this may be surprising. I've got the Georgia Bulldogs finishing second. I think Georgia is going to lose one game. And based off the predicted order of finish, I think you guys know which game it is going to be. They've got to go. And you look at Georgia's schedule. I don't think anybody in the SEC, by the way, guys, is going undefeated. I just don't see it. The schedules are too difficult. The SEC is too deep. You look at Georgia. they got to go on the road to Bama, on the road to Ole Miss, on the road to Texas. I, I just don't see them sweeping through that as good as I think Georgia is going to be. So I think they drop a game. I think that puts them in that two spot. And number one in my predicted order of finish for the regular season in their first season in the SEC. I've got the Texas Longhorns, guys. And like I mentioned, listen, schedule matters. Guys, not only does Texas have a great football team, They've got the right head coach. They've got the quarterback. They've got the O-line. They've got weapons. They've got the defense. Secondary is a question, yes. And you got to replace some big-time bodies on the defensive front. But I think they're going to reload defensively. But, guys, the schedule plays so well for them as well. It really does. It re I mean, you got a, you got a difficult matchup early on at Michigan. I think that's going to be a great test for them. But, I mean, Michigan's a completely different team than they were last year. You get Georgia on your home field. Got a really tricky one to close out the season at Texas A&M. Uh, but, I mean, guys, you got Oklahoma as well in Red River. Let's not forget. But I think this works out really, really, really well for Texas. Like, There's no secret that Texas got a favorable draw. Is there? Is there? I don't think it's any secret at all that Texas got that favorable draw. I think they will take advantage of it. I think they will roll through. And in their first season, Texas finishes number one in the SEC. Now, 
Not only is this predicted order a finish, though, we're picking an SEC champion. And like I said, Texas finishes one. Georgia finishes two. So that would equate to the SEC championship game in Atlanta, Georgia. Longhorns, Bulldogs, I do think Georgia will get their revenge against Texas. They will avenge for the earlier season loss in Austin. And I think Georgia gets the W and they will win the SEC title over Texas is in an absolute thriller there in the dome at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So Texas finishes number one in the regular season. Georgia wins the one when it matters. And they are crowned SEC champions. Guys, it's going to do off me. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in again. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Check us out via podcast wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. Until next time, guys, I'm Chris Phillips of SEC Unfiltered. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in, and we'll catch you on the other side. <laughs>